at the outset, uh, I would thank uh, Dr. Banshi Bhai and Dr. Vipul to invite me on this talk. And the topic which I was given was a, what a person with diabetes need from a physician. What a bad throat, so excuse me for that. Now, when I was given this topic, what a person with diabetes need from a physician? Now, this was something uh, which was little, I thought, let me, uh, because we know what to deliver, but what they need from us is something which I thought we should know. So what it was that uh, my busy open, I asked my staff to take some sample survey of my diabetic patients. And I asked them, to, what do they need from me? So what is the reason why they have come to me? So I got uh, different kind of responses from many of the patients. Most of them told that they have come here because they want to have their sugars well controlled. Then there were people who came and told me that uh, they have seen their neighbor getting amputated. They have heard that in diabetes you get amputated, so I do not get, not my, get my leg amputated. So that's why I have come. Someone came to, someone told that uh, I don't want to lose my vision because of diabetes, I heard that it happens. And then there were some hilarious responses also. They said, we want the doctor to treat. But every time our doctor charges when I come to show the reports, he doesn't do anything much. So we want that he should uh, charge less from us. Third consultation or second should be made free. So, so many responses really, you know, came to me when, when, they, when I asked for the survey. But essentially, uh, as you know that in diabetes in India, we've got a very bleak outlook. Because uh, we are 101 million people with almost uh, 136 million people with, with pre-diabetes. So when you have got a, this kind of huge population with diabetes, you are likely to have a lot of uh, expectations from the patients. And their expectations also would be uh, would vary as per the geographical locations. But then their, their expectations is huge. And regardless of that, uh, whether we believe it or not, but then we do have a sufficiently prudent doctors compared to geography, yes, whatever the data is to say. Because if you see the Western countries in US or in uh, this uh, European part, they have, I have learned that they have got more value of a doctor because they get their appointment late. Here you can just walk into the chamber of any doctor and you get things. So their expectations here are, are quite huge compared to the Western counterparts. So we need to explain to the patient that, because another important thing is that why we are discussing this is that the diabetes, development of type 2 diabetes is very progressive and that we all know. Uh, we all know that uh, insulin resistance is the primary factor and ultimately uh, you have a beta cell failure which happens over a period of years together. So whenever in this particular entire cycle you have got a postprandial level, postprandial plasma glucose well it gradually rises, your fasting rises and then you have over diabetes. <coughs> Uh, now, what does the person need? See, essentially what they need is, they need to, the person needs that you should give them a knowledge of his diabetes. You should uh, tell them the expected progression of the disease. You should tell the, the lifestyle modification which he, he is supposed to do. You should tell them about the lifetime restrictions which he is supposed to, he or she is supposed to put. The dietary restrictions, we should tell them. We should also tell them regarding their treatment goals. We should also tell them regarding the treatment options they have, the treatment side effects which can happen when you start the medication. These are all things they need to know and they want us to know from basically. And the expected timeline during in which you will be able to control their sugars. So these all are the expected things which the patient wants from us as a treating clinician. So essentially, if you combine everything in together, they want us to have a, uh, they want us to utilize the standard test, which makes the diagnosis and the detection very early and easy. They want us to provide a comprehensive education diabetes on the self-management skills and the healthy lifestyle choices. This is all they want from us. They, they, they want us that we should tell them. And we should initiate and adjust the doses of medications as per the based on the guidelines that we all know. We should tell them about the type 1 diabetes. We should tell them about the type 2 diabetes. We should tell them what is GDM. We should tell them that sugars are good. But when sugars need insulin as a key to enter inside the cell, and when the key is not there or inefficiently walking, you have this hypoglycemia which is bad for our 
the, uh, for your body on a longer setup. We need to explain them. So we take a piece of pen and paper and try to explain them when sometimes somebody first comes to you. Because that is what is he or she needs. That why to me? Why am I diabetic? I don't have anybody in family in diabetes. Why, why did I have this uh, diabetes? They also need to know that as the time passes, they sh there should be a regular checkup of their eyes, liver, kidney, heart, everything. Because that is what is going to help them out on a regular basis. So education is the most important part in these cases. We also need to explain them about the beta cell function. Because what happens is they don't know about beta cells, they don't know about pancreas. So generally I sit them and try to, I take, I take uh, the Google uh, images. I was saved, I just show them and I tell them this is the pancreas, this is how it has happened with you. So as your age advances, as the time progresses, beta cell is going to decline. And which is why this all the entire hyperglycemia casket is going to run into you. Of course, the disease progression would also depend on the age, on the BMI, the ethnicity and the phys physical activity and genetics, that all we know. So they expect us that when should we they screen their eyes, when should we screen their kidneys, when should we check their lipids. We all know the moment patient comes, we must check their lipids, we must check their uh, fundus, we must check their uh, uh, nephropathy screening, that's the first thing. So we should tell them, the guidelines tell us very clearly that we, we are going to type 2 diabetes. So when you diagnose, I'll screen you for retinopathy. Then after subsequently, for, after subsequently or yearly, I'll ask you to go for it. For, di for diabetes, uh, after puberty or after five years after diagnosis, that's how we generally advise them. So we need to tell them, if you're retinopathy, then every six months or one year, depending on the situations, then you need to get your retinopathy screening done. Nephropathy, same thing. At the time of diagnosis, when you diagnose this stuff, at that time you should get your screening and after one year, every annual, we should ask them. For type 1 diabetes, also, uh, we should tell them that why it is important that you, you need to screen for uh, uh, nephropathy. Lifestyle modification is one which their expectations are a lot. See, they don't like that we send them right away to the dietitian sitting next to our room because they want us to tell about the diet. They want us to tell what they should eat, what they should not eat. And generally what happens is that we tell them that please go to the next room, somebody is going to guide you for the proper diet and everything, they will give a print out and everything. But they actually want that we should talk something about that diet. We should ask what do you eat, how much do you change. Somebody is all, we, it's absolutely uh, not uh, so much right to tell them eight, six times a day when somebody is already used to with the diet of three times a day, say three diet. So we should tell them that is how we need to modify. We need to tell them that they, they basically want our consent in diet. That's what I've learned. Even the dietitian gives the diet. They, they would come back to us and say, show us the page and tell us. They want us to give us stem that this, what is given is right. So we need to spend few minutes for diet with them because that's what they actually want. And in fact, for them, when they come to us, they want that we should talk on diet. That diet is so important for them, you know. So they want us to talk on diet, they want us to talk on exercise. They want, us to, take, they want to talk us how much, how, how, how should we change our life, lifestyle and everything. So that is what actually they want us to talk. Just not give the perception right away and tell them take this, take this, take this. So that is one thing I uh, learned from the little survey that I made. Uh, now uh, as far as the uh, newly diagnosed patients, what we need to do is we always uh, take the history and the proper physical examination. We always uh, take the idea of the risk factors, the comorbidities, whatever they are having. We also do the routine tests, which you all know, HPNC, lipids and fasting and everything, urine spot here and everything. That's what we, everybody does in their body practice routinely. We need to emphasize them on, as we discussed, on the dietary changes. Weight management is very important. Because when they come to us, they would come with a BMI return in this. If you have a BCA machine, body composition analysis machine, then they would come with that BCA um, graph and then that's very easy for them that, oh, you are so much overweight. Give them target. This is what is your target. And this target, we need to achieve that anyhow. Because when you give that target, they would be, they would be uh, mot motivated to do it. And specifically when obese diabetics come to us, uh, we need to motivate them for weight loss. That's what they actually want to, they want us to tell that you'll be able to do that. They will be able to achieve weight loss. That's what they want us to tell. And we tell them, you will be able to do it. It's a journey. They feel very happy. They feel very, very comfortable. And then, uh, we obviously, they want us to tell the medications. 
which would be right for them, which would be proper to them. They also want us to tell that when to, should, should do their SMB on a regular basis. They also want us to tell that the, uh, what are the side effects of the medication which you are, which are prescribing, if at all. So all these things in newly diagnosed patients, they want us on a regular basis to us. In established type 2 diabetes mellitus patients, they, uh, they want us to adjust the regimens. Somebody comes to and tells us that I have hypoglycemia with this medicine or this dose of insulin. We just need to sit down. We are, when we were started SGL2, we already told them that this SGL2 is likely to cause some issues burning in your view, explained them fully. So when it happens, they know that this is, this is happening. So we tell them, that's fine, you just need to change the medication. So essentially, they want us empathy, they want our time, and they want us to talk nicely with us, nicely with them in the scientific background. That's what they want. They also want that the diabetes doctor should be updated in knowledge. That's what I, I learned from the little survey. Because they want that whatever they, they learn from the media that uh, a lot of new things are going on in the di diabetic uh, medicine part. So they, they want that if there is something new, they want us to tell. Every time we, are, I, we are, I attend some conferences and if they know, every time, I, I, every time I come from ADA, they always come and ask me, is there anything new for me from ADA for you? you know? So those kind of things are from their perspective. It's very important that we understand that and we guide them accordingly. So this is all we generally do that we need to uh, have the uh, targets for HPLNC, we explain them. When we explain them, if they are ready for CGM, we need to ask them for CGM also. Gestational diabetics, when they come to us, there is a different group of expectations for the GDMs with us. We put them on metformin. The first thing they have is, uh, won't there, it won't have any side effects on the fetus. We need to explain them. The metformin is fine, you can take it. If you, have to, if you have to put on insulin, we need to tell them that insulin is also fine. It's for a short-term thing. We need to take care once your GDM is over. So they need to have proper explanation. When pre-diabetics come to us, they need to understand and that the life stage is, is the main stay where you need to manage all these things. When your patient comes with steroid into hypoglycemia, they want us to tell that the steroid is the culprit. So they feel very happy when they know that the steroid is the culprit. They said, okay, that's fine. It's a short-term period. Short-term we are giving you. So you, we need to arrange, adjust the doses and tell them this is how you take the insulin, this is how you adjust the doses depending on the time of steroid which has been given to you. And there are a lot of comorbidities like somebody is going for surgery, then we need to adjust it. We need to tell them, don't worry, you are going for surgery, you will be fine. This is how we talk with the, uh, your surgical doctor, surgeon and uh, we will manage that, don't worry. They just want us to tell that nothing is going to happen when the patient goes for surgery. So that's what they want us, that you will take care even when they go for surgery. In ESRDs, also we need to explain them that the medication clearance would have some issues. And we need to tell them when the, they feel very happy that my sugar is under control. So we need to tell them, no, you are progressing, that, that's the basic issue. And in old age, also we need to understand because there were a lot of poly, poly pharmacy going on. So we need to tell them this is all very important. We all need to tell them that the new onset diabetes, they should at least do fasting blood sugar uh, or one more prepandial at least to value every day. And they must check whatever, whenever hyperglycemia is suspected. In stable and well-controlled diabetics, we need, to, we need to tell them that at least you value on alternate days. You should check your sugars on alternate days at different times of the day and you, you should check your at least one fasting blood sugar every week. So building conf conf confidence is important. Tackling the acute complications, chronic complications, the importance of regular screening. These are very important. Important is to explain them about hypoglycemia. Tell them 15 gram carbohydrate rule take one small fruit, take four candies, take them that you can take half cup of juice, take them that you can take one teaspoon of sugar. So two or glucose tablets. This is how we need to tell them. 15 grams of carbohydrates means this much. Wait for 15 minutes, less than 70, you need to repeat that or come back to us immediately. So these all things need to, we need to tell them very regularly. Physicians also need to manage the comorbidities and also need to take care of the mental health of a physician, mental health. And I give them a printouts of the goals. Your fasting should be this, your fasting should be, your post fandle should be this, your lipid should be this. Uh, we need to tell them that this much carbohydrate you should eat, proteins this much you should eat, and fats you should eat this much. Because when you give them goals, they are very happy. We should tell them when you go for annual, give them a printouts of this, they feel very happy when they are when you are giving them printouts. That's what actually they want. Vaccination, very important. Tell them this is how we are going to do it. Tell them about hypoglycemia. Tell them about the um, B12, which you are going to supplement when there is metformin and tell them about the lipodystrophy. 
and weight gain the insulin can make. I think if you do all those th- all these things, then the 